Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. After the Collodial Silver video that wanted to put out, there's been a lot of questions asked about the machine in which I use to uh, build this. And a lot of people want to do this at home, so they wanted to be able to see how to build a machine themselves. So I thought I'd take this time to show you what I did to create this machine that makes the Collodial Silver. To start with, we're going to take a transformer here. This here you can get at any electrical supply place where they sell um, the plugins and stuff for computers and stuff. Now, to do Collodial Silver the way that they say to do it, you need 27 volts. Well, I could not conf I could not find a converter that was 27 volts, but I was able to find one that was 24 volts. And what this is, this is an AC 110 converter that converts the power from 110 down to DC, which is direct current of 24 volts. Now this is 24 volts instead of 27, which will still work, just maybe not to the efficiency of a 27 volt one. Now what we've done on these converters, you have to, and you want to keep your polarity right. If you'll notice on your converter, you'll on most all your converters, you you will find one side of your wire has a tracer on it. That's those little white dots that you see there. And when you see that on a wire, it'll either be a tracer or the side of the wire will have a rough feel to it. You'll have little grooves cut in it. That usually is the common side. And on some of your uh, converters, the plug-in up at the top, you'll notice will have a wide side to it and a narrow side so that when you plug it into your plug-in, your plug-ins in the wall have a wide side and they have a narrow side to it. The wide side is always your common side. The narrow side is always your hot side. In order to keep the polarity right, you want to make sure that you run this all the way to the end down here. Now this long wire here, you'll notice on the ends I've cut it and put these two alligator clips on it. Well, it originally had a, a plug-in that looked like this that was made to plug into a piece of machinery. So what I did was I cut that off. I just backed up a couple of inches from it and cut it off. And then I located the tracer that I was talking about. That tracer is the one with the, the white dots in it there. And I put my, my neutral alligator clip on it. I let it be a red one because red ones is what I had. And what I did was I went to the hardware store and I bought a pack of these alligator clips. Which is something you can get them in any parts house or hardware store. You can pick those up to go on these. And what I did was I take them. And I also, when I was at the hardware store, the automotive store, I picked up these inline connectors. They're splicers. Now the ones that I chose was for an 18 to 22 gauge wire, which this wire falls within that um, range. Okay, what I did was I taken a pair of regular, these are wire pliers like you use for stripping wire with, automotive wire. I took these and I cut my end off of the cable that I showed you there and I reached up and I stripped back a place and I slid the red connectors on, and these things are designed where you can reach up there and you just crimp these things, and it holds them in place. And that's how I, con I created the converter where I could use it from 110 and use it on this collodial silver machine because I have these little alligator clips on each end of it down here that I can mash and open and be able to... What these are for is when I get these rods, these are the silver rods, I'm able to reach and clip it onto the top of those silver rods so that my current can pass through those rods so that you can see it. Now, that's how the converter part was actually built, the electronic part of it. Let me move all that. Now, this is the actual part that goes in the jar. This is what it looks like as a finished product. What I've done was I took a regular blue plate lamp mayonnaise lid which is just off of any mayonnaise jar. I went to the hardware store and I picked up a large black anchor. This is what you drill a hole in concrete in. You stick this down in the concrete to put a bolt down in. It's just plastic. You don't want any metal. You want to make sure it's plastic. 
And I took my pocket knife and I reached up and I cut that very end off of it right there so that it would lay down flat against the top of this lid whenever I put it on there. Because see that little rim on that holds that up off of that lid and by cutting that rim off it allows it to lay flat down on top of the lid. And once I've done that, you're going to need two drill bits. I just brought one with me here just to show you. This is a 16th inch drill bit. You're going to need a 16th inch one and you're going to need a 1 8th inch one. So what I did was I laid this thing down on the lid, kind of centered it, and I figured I'm going to have to have a zip tie on this end and I'm going to have to have a zip tie on this end. So I took the 1 8th inch bit and I drilled a hole on each side of there and I drilled a hole on each side over here. And I took two of these small zip ties like this here and what I did was I ran them through the lid and brought them back around as you can see on this one here and I pulled the zip ties up and I just zip tied the plastic anchor to the top of that lid through those holes that I drilled on each side there. You should be able to see the holes on each side that I pulled the zip tie through if I turn it over, that's what it looks like on the other side. You just got the zip ties going through those four holes that I drilled. Now, the next phase is you've got to fix this thing so that the collodial silver rods can go down through the tops of this here. So what I did was I took the 16th inch drill bit and I drilled me two holes about an inch apart on each side down through the black anchor and I come out through the bottom of the lid down here. You can see I have a hole here and I have a hole over here. They're about an inch apart with a 1 16th inch bit. And what that does is that allows me when I take these silver rods to be able to stick those silver rods down through this. And it creates about the right distance right here you want for the electrolysis to take place. What this is for is so that whenever you get ready to get this done, you can hook your alligator clips to the tops of these. After you get it screwed on the jar, you'll hook these up and you'll position them so that these two rods are parallel to one another, about an inch apart all the way down through that jar. And you're not going to want to touch it once you get them in place because that's the whole concept of this thing is when you get these in place and you get those two rods sitting parallel with one another in that jar, you're going to want to leave it where the electrolysis runs back and forth through these to create the particles of silver that will come off and get into the water which creates your actual collodial silver. This is all there is to this machine. It's extremely simple. You're basically breaking 110, converting it from 110 and a plug-in in a wall to a 24 volt DC down to here with two alligator clips, clipping it into this little system that I made. You don't want any metal anywhere. You want it to all be plastic so that there's no conducting electricity in this quite simple actually nothing really to it very few tools required all of it can be bought at a hardware store or just some of it comes out of your own pantry not a very expensive fix at all so i hope that this has been educational to y'all put out on to our videos so that people could see how this machine was actually built if you like what you've seen today, be sure to like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel so you can continue to watch the videos that we do. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.